With Bitcoin approaching $66,000 as I make this video, is it safe to say that the correction is over and that we're about to blast off to new all-time highs? Well, let's find out. This is Crypto Simulation Theory. I am the Gaussian Snake. Another thing in here is financial advice. I also have a really cool Telegram group called the Snake Pit where we do daily market updates, chart analyses, and much more. What we have here is Bitcoin on the two week time frame. The reason why I like to use a two week time frame is it's sort of that sweet spot between not having enough data, which would be like the monthly time frame, and maybe having too much data like the weekly time frame or daily time frame where it's a little difficult to sift through the noise. I love the two week because it's a very clear idea of where the market is going and I love the fractals that are on the two week time frame. And so we can see that we've been going more or less sideways similar to what we did in April of 2021. And uh, we're kind of wondering, well, what, what happens from here? I mean, if we zoom in, by the way, this red zone was a $45,000 to $50,000 price level, which is a region of very strong horizontal support. This is a Gaussian channel, but uh, let's ignore that for a moment and just kind of focus on the candles, the two week candles and see how they look. So when you have a Gaussian channel on your trading view, it's gonna make your green candles They'll still be green. Your red candles turn this dark green, but these are actually red candles. And you can see that we've had two red candles in a row, but we've had some buying pressure down below. These haven't been just straight out um, red, you know, just full body candles or anything crazy like that. If you compare back to April of 2021, you can see that um, the red candle we got there was a lot more significant. So um, yeah, it does beg the question, like, is this flagging? Are we about to like go off to new highs or, or what? So that's not an easy question to answer, especially when things look so neutral like they do here with a slightly bearish bias. One thing I will tell you is that the Gaussian channel on the two week is green. It is concave up. That is a bullish sign. So we should take that into account, but we have to look at much more than that to form any kind of conclusions. So I went ahead and removed the Gaussian channel and the red zone so I could focus on these whole moving averages, H-U-L-L, which are much more current moving averages than the simple moving average or SMA that tends to be more lagging and presents older data. What you'll notice is we have a collection here. Let me, let me explain to you which each one is. This is a two week time frame. The yellow would represent the 40 week HMA. The blue would represent the 100 week HMA. The white would represent the 200 week HMA and the, and the red is the 400 week HMA. Now what you'll notice that's rather bullish, I think anyways, is we're about to have a golden cross of the 200 week with the 400 week HMA. Now that is kind of significant. That is basically taking into account all this upward price action that's happened. And that would place the 100 week above the 200 week for the first time really since 2022. So I'm, I'm sorry, we placed the 200 week above the 400 week for the first time since 2022. And that is significant because that would line up all these moving averages. Now, where we have run into a little bit of trouble is that the 20, I'm sorry, the 40 week HMA is starting to curl down, price is underneath it, it is acting as resistance. However, the 100 week HMA has been acting as support and that is around 63K. So as long as we can stay above this one, then there's no reason to think that trouble lies below. But if we did fail to hold this HMA, then you're looking at this golden cross region as sort of your last stop for support. This is the two week time frame. There's other HMAs on the weekly time frame, daily time frame that certainly price could challenge. Um, we don't have to come all the way down to 45K. But um, my point is we are underneath this 40 week for the first time in quite some time. Right? It's been a while. I think you have to go back to like late um, around this time in 2023 to find instances of where we spent this much time below, although we did break back up. So that, you know, is something to definitely consider. The Bollinger Bands look really good. We are kind of marching off towards oblivion. Um, as you can see, we did hit the top of the Bollinger Band um, on February 26th and then just the week of February 26th and just kind of went sideways. And so you have to kind of wonder, are we about to slam into the median line of this Bollinger Band, which again, we haven't done since 2023. It's a really long time to not do it. If you go back to past bull markets, you could see that only during the most major mania phases would you stay above the Bollinger Band for this long. You see in April 2021, we slammed into the top and then went sideways and then down and underneath it. That is something to consider. Uh, in 2019, similar kind of phenomenon occurred. In 2017, 2016, we rolled, uh, we uh, 
we basically stayed above this Bollinger band, above this weighted logarithmic Bollinger band line the entire cycle, and then went underneath it. Um, now in 2013, which I think could be something kind of like what we might see this time around, and that's just get a, a freaking guess. I mean, who knows? You know, we slammed into the the weighted logarithmic Bollinger band median line, bounced off it, and slammed into it again. So we had like this double top phenomenon that really hadn't been seen again um, until 2021. And even then, it wasn't really that that wasn't that remarkable. Honestly, the bulk of the move had occurred here. So this is a really weak move in comparison to some of the other ones that have occurred in the past. You have to kind of think to yourself, well, maybe a major move is coming fairly soon. If we were to extend this line out a little bit, you know, maybe just draw an extension, you know, maybe we could hit this line as early as maybe a month from now in July and see a resolution to the upside. And, you know, it's possible price doesn't have to go below 60K. So it's sort of like the best case scenario. And I think it is something to certainly consider. And I think it is something that could be quite likely. I have said 45 to 50,000 was kind of like, you know, my base case for a while for where price would correct. But the longer time goes on that we don't hit those levels and we stay above 60K, the more likely I am to think that maybe we don't hit those levels. This can't be, this can't be it for the mania phase though, can it? I mean, this mania phase wasn't that remarkable in 2021. 2017's was really remarkable. 2013's was extremely remarkable. And, you know, initial capitalization in 2011 was, was phenomenal. Um, you know, I, I don't think this is it, but if it is, my goodness, that is disappointing, right? You'd have a triple top cycle, um, which is rare. I don't think that's what's going to happen. I actually think we are going to have more upside, but we need to find evidence to suggest that that is the case, not just speculate based on feelings. Now, something I did want to come back to, if you've watched my previous videos, you know about this. This is called the price momentum oscillator, which just to kind of recap, every single time it has hit levels above like the 80 level, um, we had, you know, with the green uh, signal line, we have always seen the green signal line flip red every single time, and usually in a pretty substantial way. Going back to 2021, you can see this happened. We didn't get our, our, our next surge really until, you know, that last leg up that started in like August, and we had a three month period where our price went up. Um, prior to that, we had the 2019 surge which didn't quite make it to the 80 level, but we nonetheless saw a pretty dramatic drop. You know, 2016, we kind of rode this for a while until we hit this top level, bull market was over. Um, in 2013, we got this like W-shaped recovery. This is something I'm kind of hoping for, no guarantee it happens. And then of course we had our 2011 initial kind of capitalization. So we've gotten all the way up to 100, for the first time since 2013. We've not gotten that high all the way since 2013. Uh, there is certainly reason to believe that we could see another surge upwards in this bull market, but I think we're gonna need to see some red. And if you look at the kind of red that we've seen before, and if you watched my previous video, I've already kind of talked about this, but it doesn't hurt to go over it again. You can see that in 20, you know, 2020 to 2021, when we reached these levels, we actually reached these levels in 2020, uh, not as high as we went in um, this year, we had a pretty substantial drop, right? There were bounces along the way, like April, 2021, July, you know, we had some minor bounces there, but the signal line was red. Only went green briefly, and then we had to endure the rest of, you know, we had to endure basically a, a bear market before we got to November of 2022, and things started to look up again in our accumulation phase for Bitcoin. Um, yeah, and I mean, there is, there, there have been time, this is interesting because the 2019 bounce to the 2020 top almost looks a little bit like a stretched out version of 2013. Um, you have this double bottom that occurred. If you go back to 2013, you can see that we had, you know, our initial, sorry, right here, we had our initial top and then we had this like W shape recovery. That's kind of what I'm hoping for right now. I don't know that it'll pl have to play out that way. Um, I'm not psychic. I really don't know. I, I have to hope this wasn't it because that's a pretty disappointing bull run <laughs> if that was it. Um, but I'm thinking we're going to see some red and that red could take us into July. We could see a little bounce in July um, that could potentially take us to new highs. And then maybe we get close to like, uh, you know, maybe 80K, 90K. I don't know what it would be. And then that, that you know, maybe we get some chop over there and that could start all coin season. So, you know, what, what I'm kind of talking about here is if I were to draw it out and I'll change the color, 
it's kind of hard to do because I can't get rid of this box. But if I were to go like this, for instance, take us into July, and let's color that um, red. And then let's, you know, I'll make this white in a minute, but let's say with price, momentum, but maybe for the remainder of June, we kind of trend down. And then maybe we come back up briefly or something, you know, and then come back down again. Something like that could certainly be possible. And that would form a pretty nice head and shoulders pattern. We already have a head and shoulders, but an even bigger head and shoulders. Not really what you want to see, honestly. Um, but nonetheless, you know, could have like, I do expect some kind of mean reversion. And, and this would flip green briefly. Like inside here, this would actually be green. And this bump, although it doesn't look that impressive on here, could take Bitcoin to a new all-time high. Um, I don't I don't think we're getting back up here for at least another four years to the, to the top, um, maybe even longer than that, right? I think we will get between 80 and 100 at some point, but I just don't think that, you know, the levels that we just saw are going to happen again for quite a long time. Um, this, that's just been the pattern. For, but that is then you know that doesn't mean our bull market's over. That doesn't mean we can't still have some pretty substantial runs. And if we did get a bounce like this, this could be all what we need to get all coin season started. We just need Bitcoin above 73k. We need to get it somewhere like it could be 80 to 90k where it chops around. It could tap 100k and then start to you know oscillate around. All that's possible with a little bump. And I think that bump could come in July. But I think that you know Bitcoin might struggle and you know, we might see price momentum kind of go down. And that could correspond to Bitcoin's price just hovering between 80 and 90K. Let's say it went up to like 100K or something like that. Because 100K isn't really that far from where we are right now. Um, or 90K or 80K. It's not like super far from where we are. So it wouldn't require price momentum to have a really large um, upsurge. So that's just something to consider as a possibility. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't trade this. This is just a theory. But it's something I would you know, certainly consider as a possibility. So this one's a little hard to read. This is the wave trend oscillator. And you can see that the last time we got a red dot was in March of 2021. And that signaled it. That was the end of it for the bull market for the most part. And we got a little bounce in November. And that was all she wrote. <clears throat> That'd be disappointing. Um, if we go back in history, we can see that there have been times where we've printed many of these red dots. And the red dot we've just printed is inside the red region, right? The red dot we printed in 2021 was way up here in the black. So if you go back to like 2016, 2017, we're looking a little bit like March of 2017. You know, and hopefully we can at least see some movement outside of the red to the top, which we've always seen during bull markets, as you can see. We've always seen that during bull markets, and that hasn't happened yet. So while we are printing a little bit of red, I think we can curl back around especially as we head into quarter three of this year, which I think is gonna be very bullish for Bitcoin and altcoins and print some green up here in the upper region. That's what I would like to see. Um, so every single bull market that we've had, we've had that happen that hasn't happened yet. We're printing some red right now, which does happen in past bull, you know, like we get red, green, red, green. I don't think we're gonna see something like that, but like, you know, maybe something more like 2013 where, you know, this is, of course, a different pattern as well, but you had some green, you had a thin faint amount of red, a little bit of sideways, and then you had some green again. So I, I think something like this is certainly reasonable. We could see two more major tops. I think a triple top cycle is certainly um, possible. Our first top being 73K. Maybe our next top is just under 100K. And then maybe we get a third top out in 2025 that's around 200K. You know, something like that could happen, and it could certainly play out on this oscillator you know and you know we just kind of like come back up here again come back down and then one final time up in 2025 before we head down i think something like that is certainly possible in fact maybe even probable so don't get fooled out by what's going on now it's the first moment of weakness we've had in a really long time it's kind of necessary to reset things to take us higher i think july is a reasonable uh, month to look at for a possible reversal I don't think it, that July is going to necessarily print the kind of reversal for Bitcoin that people are expecting. I don't think Bitcoin is going to go over 100K, but I think we, we're likely to see a new top for Bitcoin relatively soon. Um, and that could be the one to take us into altcoin season. As a counter argument, maybe we have to come um, you know, further down. It's possible. But I, I actually think a bounce in July makes a lot of sense right now um, from what the charts are showing me. So that's kind of what I'm thinking, but we can look at some more indicators.
Something else to keep in mind is that the overall risk level for Bitcoin is 47.27 out of 100, which places it kind of in the lower half of risk. <coughs> you know, 40 risk is at 58K, 50 risk is at 69K, 100 risk is at 162K. So you can kind of see where, you know, if we were to go to like 70 risk or somewhere between 60 and 70 risk and then come back down again and, you know, cool off, that would not be um, a bad thing um, in this like, what I'm sort of proposing potential triple top cycle scenario. And that would be enough to get all coins rolling. Okay. Uh, we need to see Bitcoin kind of put in a new all time high and maintain that for some time. And I think all, I think that could, you know, spell the death of Bitcoin dominance, which I think is going to die pretty soon anyways. Sorry, I don't mean to be drawing. Whoa, all these lines. Hold on one second. Okay. You got the risk metric back up and you can see we've always hit this high level near a hundred every single cycle, right? I'm sorry. I don't mind. I gotta turn my drawing tool off. I get very sloppy with this. Um, you now we hit it in March of 2021, November 2021, uh, or say April 2020, November. Um, here it is in December of 2017. Every single major top, uh, we hit it in 2013. You see the first top didn't make it that high, but it, we didn't get this high on our current top that we just had either 2011. So every single time we have touched that, <clears throat> just like we've touched the blue line on all the bottoms. So I have a hard time believing that we're not going to hit this red line or get close to it. Okay. I think it may take a while though. So like if I had to chart out a path for what I think is, you know, somewhat likely to happen with price, you know, maybe we would see something kind of like just a slight continuation of downward. I don't know exactly how low it's going to go. And then maybe August to like October, I, I have no idea how long this would last or August to September or just August, we get up near like hundred K. I think we're going to get rejected. Um, but I think we'll find a higher floor, maybe like 80 K and maybe we crab around there for a little while. And then I think in some time in 2025 is where we really blast off and, you know, either get to hundred K or get close to it. I'm sorry, to 200 K or close to it. Uh, the red line will be a little higher. So maybe like 177K, something like that. And then I think, you know, from there, we'll probably head down to our next bear market, which will zigzag just like that. <laughs> I'm so bad at drawing these things. It's embarrassing. Uh, so yeah, you, you see that's kind of like a potential scenario, I think, like a triple top, which we've never had with Bitcoin before. And um, I think right now people are getting sort of faked out into thinking that this is a triple top cycle in the sense of like, you know, the cycle was 2021, one, two, three. That's very rare, and usually that results, this usually becomes a bull flag. It looks like a bull flag to me, so I think we're heading back up uh, sooner rather than later. July is a possibility to get us near 100K. I think we will have a, a significant amount of selling at 100K. A lot of people are going to think that's it, that's the end, um, but I don't think it is. I think we will find a way to get up to this red line at some point between the end of this year and uh, the end of 2025. I think, I think our cycle is very likely to go into 2025. One of my favorite indicators, the Trix bubble, looks really bearish right now. And it looks like it needs a little more time to play out, but potentially it's printing a um, higher low. It's been printing higher lows since July of 2022. We printed a higher low in January. We printed a higher low in September, and I think we're about to print another higher low. So I don't think price necessarily has that much further to fall. It's entirely possible, in fact. I know I presented a case for uh, 45 to 50 K sort of like it's worst case scenario in previous videos, but that's worst case. I think it's entirely possible that this 56 K level holds and uh, that level held before. And that's where you have a lot of like long-term holders that are kind of propping up support for Bitcoin price. Um, and yeah, I think we can see this curl around relatively soon in July. And as we head into August, I think we could see that next formation of another top, you know, so if I were to draw a kind of, I'll use a drawing tool on this one. You know, maybe we kind of come back up into August or September, and then September, you know, trend reverses. We come back down again, and then into 2025, we come up and print another top, and that's it. Then we head down. So that's sort of your triple top. Um, not to be confused with this triple top. Like I'm not talking about these three tops, right? I'm talking about, you know, something. Well, I can't draw it right now, but I did drew it earlier, right? You come up, September, come down crab around a little bit, 2025, you print your next top and that's all she wrote for the cycle. Something like that. I think that's quite likely actually. And uh, 
kind of my new base case for what we are likely to experience. A top somewhere near 200K. If we go really late into 2025 towards the end of the year, um, I'm a little less confident that we can do that. But if we did, then I think a top over 200K could certainly happen. But um, I'm, I'm anticipating at least a two to three X from the prices where they are right now um, before we sort of call it a day with Bitcoin and head into the next bear market. So some people have asked me if I think Bitcoin dominance has topped yet. And I'm going to go with probably not yet, but very, very close to it. So, if, you know, dominance, first of all, on the two week, it actually looks really great. But if we go to the weekly time frame, you can start to see signs of weakness forming. And, and you know, we've seen major drops happen in dominance when the Gaussian channel has flipped concave down that you know that ha that caused a major drop to happen before and you know I, I sort of think that this line right here which just sits around 58 percent is probably the limit I think Bitcoin could surprise us with another drop before the month of June closes out but it doesn't you know it doesn't have to right we could see Bitcoin continue to go up and kind of regardless I expect dominance to hold steady for now and I expect that if Bitcoin did rip to a new high, let's say that it doesn't go much lower than where it already went, doesn't even test 58K or 56K, um, I still expect dominance to go up, right? Dominance is going to go up whether Bitcoin goes up or Bitcoin goes down. That's just how it's going to be. The only way that I see dominance starting to collapse is if Bitcoin puts in a new high because then people are going to take their money out of Bitcoin and throw it in all coins. So, I'm still thinking Bitcoin probably gets close to 100K on its next leg up, which is probably going to happen, if I had to guess, sometime in late summer. So like July, August time frame heading into quarter three. If I had to guess, I think that's going to be when Bitcoin prints a new high. I think it'll take a couple months. And then as that process completes itself, I think you'll see dominance finally collapse. Um, only to come up one more time again in 2025 when I think Bitcoin will print its cycle ending all-time high and i've already given reasons for that um I, I have the tricks bubble open i don't know if it really is presenting the most useful of data but you can kind of see this like triple exponential moving average has been putting in um, lower highs every single time but it's been maintaining strength above the zero line i don't i don't anticipate that strength to continue much longer maybe we get one more lower high and then you know if that if that when we get a little bump up here uh, heading into July, and then that's all she wrote for a while before we go back up again later on. It's kind of what I'm thinking as far as dominance is concerned. So no, I don't think the dominance is top just yet, but I think it's very close to topping. So there you have it. Those are my thoughts. Bitcoin is still very much in a bull market. Everything looks really healthy underneath the hood for Bitcoin. It needed some time to cool off risk and to build out a base for another move higher. It is possible that we come down and retest that 56K level. Um, Worst case scenario is 45 to 50K, but um, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm using Bitstamp. I should be using the index, but it doesn't really matter. More or less the same at this point. Um, but yeah, like I, I really feel like by the, I mean, we're, we're closing out quarter two pretty soon, right? And then we're going to start quarter three. And I think in quarter three, we're going to see some more bullish movement out of Bitcoin. I do. I don't know if it'll happen right at the beginning of July, but I think July could be where things turn around. And I think we start to get an altcoin season, a really major one, probably sometime either at the, like the beginning or the middle of quarter three, sometime in there. You know, I originally said late spring, early summer. I'm wrong on that because we're already late spring, early summer. Not that far. Pretty sure I'm wrong. But uh, I think that, you know, those were my previous predictions. I think that it's, it's very clear that an altcoin season is coming soon. And it could be here, it could be here as soon as the end of July or, you know, August, early August. I mean, it's possible. So if you haven't loaded up on your altcoin bags and you, you haven't really selected what you want to ride out for the next few months um, or year, then I would probably start doing some shopping when prices are still low because they're not going to stay low forever. Not financial advice at all. So yeah, thanks for hopping into the crypto simulation. I'm the Gaussian Snake. Nothing here was intended to be financial advice. Please do your own research. And um, while you're at it, join my free Telegram group, The Snake Pit, for daily chart updates, market analysis, and information about new projects. 
Also, um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. Hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to be notified of future videos. Like and comment if you have anything to you want to say to me. Otherwise, I'll see you in the Telegram group and at my next video. So peace out. See you next time. Bye.